Today, the 210 gallon overstock African cichlid tank is getting a major, major change and I'm bringing you guys along with me. If you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. I've been running this tank for about a year now with nothing but sponges and pot scrubbers for Biomedia. That's right, 10 bucks, find them at your 99 cent store, pot scrubbers. Throughout this year, not only has the tank remained cycled, meaning zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and a regular amount of nitrates for a tank like this, but it's also remained crystal clear, which is something that we all want in our tanks. I feel that this year was more than enough time to prove to you guys that pot scrubbers alone for Biomedia absolutely works. If you're interested in finding out more about how it works and the process, I got a link to the entire series in the description below. Now while pot scrubbers alone do work, there's one thing that they cannot do, which is support the growth of anaerobic bacteria. You see, most Biomedia out there do great with helping you grow aerobic bacteria, which we all know as our beneficial bacteria. But anaerobic bacteria is a whole nother animal. Literally. Anaerobic bacteria need a very low flow and low oxygen environment in order to grow, which is why it's so difficult to grow them in our heavy flow, heavy oxygenated tanks and filters. The only other method we have for reducing nitrates is with the help of live plants or water changes. Now while there are a few products out there that claim to be able to grow these nitrate reducing bacteria, I've even tested one out and failed with a burning hole left in my pocket. Check that out right there. I've yet to come across one that's actually successful at it. Until now, maybe. CK Matrix has been one of the top dogs in the industry when it comes to quality biomedia, as far as keeping your tank cycled and keeping your water crystal clear. But I've recently become aware that Seachem also claims that Matrix can help in growing these anaerobic bacteria to help in reducing your nitrates. Even a few of you faithful fans of the channel have claimed the same. The mad scientist Jeff Thompson from the Caveman Fan Facebook group, wow, say that three times fast. Caveman fam, caveman fam, caveman fam. <laughs> He's been using it for years and claims it's been reducing his nitrates for years as well. My guys Jen and Laz over from JLRO Aquatics also claim the same. They even sent me a photo of their last nitrate test and those nitrate levels do look good. So because of all these claims I'm hearing from Seachem, from Jeff, Jen and Laz, and a few others, I've decided to make the switch and find out for myself if Seachem Matrix can support the growth of anaerobic bacteria in order to help in reducing your nitrates. Throughout the next few months, I'll be testing and keeping you guys updated on my findings. That way, you'll have absolutely no doubt about it. Buckle up. You ready? Let's go. So I got the FX6 out, ready to do the swap. Before we start, I wanna show you what I'm gonna use. Prime and stability, don't worry, we'll go over it in a minute. And I got the brand new matrix right here. Before I open this up and show you the pot scrubbers that were in here before, the first thing I wanna do is do a quick nitrate test so that we can see the levels that I'm working with before doing any changes. In case you don't know about this nitrate test with the API Master Test Kit, you do need to shake these bottles very vigorously for the amount of time that it says to shake these bottles. Both bottles. 10 drops of each bottle. Gotta give it the test tube a good shake for about a minute, I think it says. And then you gotta let it sit for about five minutes to get your actual reading. In less than 30 seconds, we can start to see the colors already getting pretty dark. Check that color out. In about five minutes, I'm sure it's gonna get much darker than that. We'll be back. So before I show you the results up close, today is Saturday. It is one day before my scheduled water changes and check out these nitrate levels. This red is somewhere in between the 40 to 80 parts per million right before water change date. So my nitrate levels run pretty high in this tank. I'm gonna leave that test tube right up here just in case you guys can see it get any darker. You guys ready to check out what's been inside my FX6 for about a year? Let's do it, real time. So in my top tray of the FX6 always goes my fine mechanical media pads. I always start with the blue pad on top, which is looking kind of nasty and dirty right here. Check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a toss because I'm putting everything brand new inside this FX6. I also put my chemical media, which I'm going with Purigen, is what I always use in here now. In the top tray as well, that's getting tossed. And finally, the fine white mechanical media pad. Pretty dirty and tore up. Perfect time to do a cleaning on this thing. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this top tray out to get to the middle tray to show you guys the pot scrubbers without pulling all the baskets out. Top trays out. All right, here we go, ready? 
check out the pot scrubbers. They look totally intact, not too dirty. They do got a little bit of dirt on them, so some of the dirt was getting through my fine pads. That just means that I've got to clean those fine pads and replace them a little bit sooner than I did the last time on this FX6. They're not deteriorating. They're still in one piece and looking overall pretty good. These guys have been in here for over a year, for about a year. And the last tray of pot scrubbers, they all floated up to the top because I took the top two trays out. But they're all in here, floating on the top, and they all look pretty much the same. All intact, all in good shape. Pot scrubbers are the truth. But, like I said guys, the one thing that they're not gonna do is support the growth of anaerobic bacteria. It's not gonna happen with pot scrubbers. So that's why we're changing over to CK Matrix. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dump this filter out. I'm not gonna bother cleaning this with tank water because I'm planning to just see this filter brand new, like it's a brand new filter with brand new media. So I got the FX6 nice and clean, ready for some brand new media. But during that time, if you've been keeping an eye on my test tube over here, this thing has gotten plenty darker. Let me show you. Which really makes a lot more sense because I know that normally my tank does run pretty high on nitrates. Check that out. That red has changed to a deep dark red, getting pretty close to this 160 level right here, which is pretty normal for my tank. But this 160 parts per million of nitrates is a great starting point to really be able to tell whether the matrix is gonna help in reducing this on a weekly basis. Now before we get started with the setup of the FX6 using the matrix, I wanna make something absolutely clear to you guys. The reason why I'm able to completely remove all of my biomedia from the entire FX6 and swap it with brand new media that has no bacteria on it at all is because I have a second FX6 on this 210 gallon tank. So essentially, I'm only replacing 50% of my biomedia at once. If you've only got one filter in your tank and your tank is fairly new, fairly young, I would say anywhere around three months or less, then I would remove 25% of your biomedia at a time. This is if you wanted to change out your biomedia, 25% of the time is fine. If you've got a mature tank, let's say about a year or more older, then it's safe to remove about 50% of your biomedia at a time, just like I'm doing on this 210. Now the way I set up my FX6 is probably gonna be a little bit different than the way you're normally used to, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain as I go through. So, top tray, we're gonna leave that for last. Bottom and middle trays is going to be all matrix. The reason why you don't see those red trays in here anymore, I've long since tossed them away, because when you're going to use the same biomedia throughout your whole filter, you really don't need those red trays. They're more for in case you wanted to use two or three different types of biomedia, you could separate them that well. But since we're going full matrix here, no reason to use the red trays. It just gives you more space for more media. Now a good idea when you're using media like matrix or other small little forms of media is not to just toss them into your basket all free and willy nilly. You're gonna use a media basket. A media basket helps for multiple reasons. One, when it's time to clean your filter out, it's very easy to just grab the entire basket full of your biomedia, take it out of your trays, and toss it into your tank while you perform your maintenance. That way you preserve all the bacteria that's on the media. And another good reason for it is that if you ever need to set up a brand new tank, or a quarantine tank, or a hospital tank, you could easily pop open your filter, grab this bag of seeded biomedia, take it out of your filter, and use this in another filter on that other tank, and that tank will be cycled immediately. That's why it's a good idea to have accessible media bags full of seeded biomedia. Okay, I filled my bag up pretty much the amount that's gonna go in this basket. Now I'm gonna head over to the sink and give this a quick rinse just to get all that dusty residue off of it before putting it into our filter. Now we're ready to go. Dripping, soaking wet. So that's a nice full basket with a full media bag of Matrix. Our middle tray, guys, is gonna be exactly the same thing as the bottom. Load this sucker up with as much Matrix as possible. I only have one of those bigger media bags, so I gotta use this little smaller one, but that's okay. I'm gonna fill it up as much as possible, and whatever leftover space I have, I'm just gonna put Matrix right over it. After a quick rinse, ready to go right in the tray. Now the top tray, guys. This is where the fun part starts. Because of the way water flows in an FX6 specifically, is why this top tray is gonna to be a little bit different. So we all know water flows up the sides and then goes right down through the center. 
So this top piece is going to have a fine mechanical pad to grab those tiny little particles that made it through these big coarse sponges. Whatever makes it through here will get caught with the fine pads right on top of this top tray. So I normally use a blue and a white pad in the top tray, but I'm all out of blue pads, so two white pads is gonna be just as great. Now, what I do differently here is that I like to sandwich my chemical media in between these two pads. What chemical media? Seachem Purigen. You guys saw it when I took it out. Now, the reason why you wanna sandwich it is because you're forcing water through the bag of Purigen by sandwiching it in between your two fine pads. Water is always gonna go through the path of least resistance. So if the pads have more resistance than the Purigen, it's gonna force the water through the Purigen, which is exactly what you want. Now, the reason why your chemical media is going in the top tray, I know you guys have that question as well. In general, we all know that chemical media usually goes last in order of media, right? It goes mechanical, then biological, and then chemical filtration at the end. Well, the way that the FX6 is designed, the end would actually be in the bottom tray. So since you need to take out and replace your chemical media and your fine pads about every month or so, you would have to dig into your FX6, pull out all of your trays, and get to the bottom tray just to get that bag of Purigen out of there and put a new one in. The efficient way, by keeping your chemical in the top tray every month or so, all you gotta do is pop the top off your FX6 without removing any of your baskets from the main FX6 basket, reach into the top tray, remove your chemical and fine pads, toss it, replace it with brand new stuff, pop the top back on, and you're done. This way you prevent having to take all the trays out and disturbing a bunch of bacteria in your FX6 when it's not necessary. And trust me when I tell you that I've been doing this long enough that the chemical media in the top tray before your bio media is not going to affect your cycle, it's not going to affect any of your bacterial growth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get these baskets inside the main basket, but there's still one more very important element that I gotta tell you guys about. Anytime that you do a full canister filter cleaning, or in this case, setting up a brand new filter with brand new media, you are gonna to want to dose stability every time. Why? Stability is bacteria in a bottle. And by using this in a brand new filter, it's gonna boost the production of bacteria in your filter, especially when you just added some brand new bio media that's got absolutely nothing on it. I like to dose the full amount required for your tank's total volume of water directly into the filter. Now, you see this tube right here? Don't get fooled, this tube is not the tube that goes into the filter. This is actually water going back out to your tank. The inside is over here. So I like to dose my stability right down the end tube just because it makes the stability get to the bottom of the filter and mix up with everything on its way up. Not a necessary thing, just something I like to do. Now, if you were setting up your filter for the first time and you were using brand new tap water in here, you would also want to dose prime right into your filter in order to dechlorinate that tap water before sending it into your tank. In my case though, I'm going to hook this filter back up with no water at all. I'm going to use the tank water to fill it up. Yes, that is going to reduce my water level in my tank, but like I said earlier guys, tomorrow's water change day, so I'm okay with that. Now let's fast forward a few months and see how this matrix has been doing. Check that video out right there. If you're watching this in real time and you can't go in the future, Check this playlist out right here with more information on FX6s. I think you're going to enjoy it. See you on the next one.